welcome back to the Rich Black Doc podcast. I am Claudia Pascal, the dentist and entrepreneur and Black Doc behind Rich Black Doc. I, you guys, I'm so excited. I know I always say this in every episode, but I literally am so excited because we are coming back this season, not just to hear about my story and my journey, but we're going to be hearing from more doctors who are pursuing financial freedom and that's doctors residents students because as i've shared before all of us can be doing this there is no such thing as having to wait we can start sooner than later and there's so much benefits to starting sooner than later one of the things that i shared in my um last season about my journey was how I kicked it off with house hacking. So you guys heard all about house hacking and um, me stressing how it's one of the most strategic ways for us to begin investing. And it's honestly one of the best advantages that we can take as students, as residents, and as doctors. And I'm so happy because today you guys will not just hear it from me. You're going to hear from our guest, Dr. Adrian Beto, who's going to be sharing about his experience of house hacking. And get this, you guys, during med school. Dr. Beto was literally house hacking all throughout med school. And I was like, you see, I I knew I wasn't crazy when I said if I knew about house hacking, I would have done it way sooner and I would have done it throughout dental school even. And so my hope is that you watching this podcast, you listening to this podcast will realize how much you truly have the potential to begin your journey now and how you don't need to have everything and you don't have to have much, but that mindset. And as I shared, that is one of the main focus for this season is really honing in on the mindset that is fundamental to this journey of ours. So aside from hearing all and strategies and everything, you're going to definitely be hearing us go in on the mindset that is essential. So Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. And without further ado, we're going to jump on in to the reason why we're here. And that is to hear about Dr. Adrian Beta's story. So Dr. Veda, thank you so much once again for being here. I'm so happy. (laughs) So please, let's go ahead and get started with you just kind of introducing yourself. Tell us about you, where are you from, where are you living, what you're doing now, and end it off with telling us what you're doing if you're not doing things related to your career or to entrepreneurship. Yeah, so um, I'm originally from Canada, and uh, did my undergrad at the great Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama, and then uh, went to Mayo Clinic in, in Rochester, Minnesota for, for medical school. Um, graduated there this past May, so it's a good feeling. I also got my master's in healthcare delivery. I have an interest uh, within the field of healthcare on different delivery models, creative ways of like equitable reimbursements and, and uh kind of incentivizing the uh, appropriate types of care. Um, so that's something kind of a passion I have in medicine. Um, things that I'm interested in outside of medicine, right now also I'm, I'm living in Cincinnati. I'm a first year emergency medicine resident at the University of Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess things I'm th- interested in outside of medicine, I do a lot of nonprofit work. I serve mm-hmm. as the, the president of a nonprofit called Bright and we're really focused on community, um, healthcare, as well as education and uh, family resources. And uh, it's kind of a, a sub sub path of that. I have a big interest in farming that we're trying to kind of advance more on like food availability and, and things of that nature. So those are all little projects that I, I'm interested in. And then uh, big sports guy as well, which is like not related to any of those, but it kind of gives me something, you know, uh, non-difficult to think about. Yes. No, that, that's a, that's essential. So I, I should preface this by saying that I personally know Dr. Beta from college as well. We both went to Oakwood. Shout out to our beloved Oakwood. And um, this brother is tall. Can you please tell our listeners and our viewers how tall you are? <laughs> I am five foot six. No, I'm just uh-huh. kidding. I, <laughs> I am six, eight. Yeah. So pretty tall. Pretty. Slightly above the average height. Like you, you can't lose beta in a crowd. You know, if there's anyone you're going to remember when you go somewhere, it's going to be beta because he's someone you definitely saw. But yeah, that's you know, why I have to behave because I can always be seen. So I can't, I can't do anything right? bad. 
right? But listen, just from your introduction alone, you already are giving people something to look at you about, like something to remember about you, you know, and that's so big. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so happy to kick off this season with you, because I know those passions and those goals of yours. I know everything you've already accomplished so far and how it's all just showing how much more greater things are to come. So listen, you, you attracting, you, you, you generate uh, attention, but you, you give people something to think about when they, when they come your way. So Kudos to you, man. I'm, I'm so happy thank for you, thank you. your journey so far. And I do want to say congrats again on finishing med school and officially being so in residency now. I know that yes. was no simple feat. And um, yeah, you did it. And in addition to doing that, you was also actively <laughs> working towards financial freedom. So Absolutely. let's go ahead. And let's, let's get into that. So tell us about your entrepreneurship journey. Like, what do you do? How often or when did you begin doing it? Like, just kind of give us a, a rundown about, about that. Yeah. So, you know, the journey um, to become a doctor is really long. You know, you have like four years of undergrad. For me, it took more because we were both a part of the same uh, nonprofit and I took some years off and volunteered there. And mm -hmm. then you have four years of med school and then like three to eight years of residency, depending on what you go into. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, the, the thought is that you'll be well paid for your years of labor and hard work and for like the, the expertise and the skill that you've generated after all this hard work. But that's a long journey, right? We're talking many, many years. Um, and so when I first started, when I was an undergrad, the goal was just to survive, right? You just got to get through. And then when I got to med school, I was like, this is still a long way to go. I got four years here and then, then residency. And of course, the mindset is often, you know, do what you have to do to survive, borrow as much as you need, you can pay it back later. Um, don't worry about this now, just focus on like your school. And there's there's some merit to that mindset of just focusing on doing well at what you're doing. But um, for me, I had the thought that, you know, if we could do things now to one lower our cost and increase our income at this moment, we could not have to borrow, we can begin to develop some wealth and, and some practices that would, when I finish, we wouldn't have like this huge debt and this huge burden. We could be in a position where it's like now we have no debt and we are completely free to do the things we want to do. I don't have to like work 100 hours a week anymore. Residency, you have to pay your dues. But afterwards, you can kind of determine the, the life that you wanted to live. And so with that in mind, we start to think about ways. Well, what can we do now to kind of create some type of increased income. I don't really have a lot of time in, in medical school. So I'm like, I can't get another job. There's only so much you can do. And um, we decided to try and buy a house. And we're like, what if we could buy a house? We'd never done Airbnb before. And if we live on one level and rent the other level out on Airbnb, that way we have the flexibility of when we need that upstairs, a family coming to visit, we can like block it. But hopefully we're like kind of fingers crossing that we're since we lived close to downtown, we won't be able to get a, a good amount of business. And initially I was thinking if we could just make like a few hundred dollars a month just to help like offset our cost, I'd be okay with it. Like if half of our mortgage was paid, that'd be a huge win. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up buying a split level house and we ended up staying in the basement of the house and renting out the top two floors. Mm -hmm. um, did some renovations and things like that. And um, I was, again, I was like, if we could just get half of our mortgage paid, this would be a huge win. We'd cut our expenses, our biggest expense all the way down. Mm -hmm. um, but once we listed it on Airbnb, we actually ended up on most months getting about three times our mortgage mm -hmm. in Airbnb revenue. And so it was like life-changing for us really, because that was like a huge source of income. Didn't mm -hmm. get paid as a med student. <laughs> and so it created it created a window for us to be able to like avoid boring. It created a window for us to be able to have like a, 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 di a difference in what we were spending and what we were making. And it also opened up this whole idea of Airbnb. We started to realize Airbnb was like a profitable venture. It doesn't take any time. You can hire people to, to do your cleaning. Um, we rarely, that most of our messages are automated. And so it's kind of like free money. You know, we obviously didn't live in our whole house and that, Mm -hmm. That is a sacrifice that we like shared a house with strangers sometimes, but they were separate. We had split levels. Mm -hmm. And then every month we just had thousands of dollars coming in from this rental that allowed us to like travel and allowed us to kind of like do the other things in life that 
yeah. brought us some joy from like a very busy time. Um, and then from there, we ended up partnering with a lady who owned a triplex in Rochester, Minnesota, but didn't live there. I wanted to rent it on an Airbnb. So she saw our listing. She messaged me on Airbnb. Thought it was a scam for sure. Um, <laughs> then we ended up talking. She's like, I really like your listing. Would you be interested in like helping me get my listing on Airbnb? So we posted her listing on Airbnb, all three units. And then we ended up managing all three units of hers and we split the profit. She paid all the bills and we just we would split the profit of, of the units. And then that opened another source of income. And then the final way that this kind of was a, a really big blessing to us. And this also, you know, I'm a believer and I feel like God was just opening doors for us. Every time we would pray, we'd have a need like with our, with our ministry or different projects we wanted to do. We're like, well, God, we need more money to make this happen. And mm -hmm. I remember we were trying to buy some land here in Kentucky to, to start a wellness center. And I was like, man, God, we need just a little bit more to make this fit into our budget. And then somebody from Airbnb once again reached out, um, somebody who owned like 30 units in Rochester. And they're like, hey, do you guys have a cleaning staff? And we're like, yeah, we have a really reliable cleaner. Um, they're like, would you be willing to contract with us to clean all of our units? Mm. And it's like, yeah, this, that'd be great. So we worked wow. on a contract with our cleaner to cover all those units. And so basically, without doing any additional work, our cleaner got more work, but she was, you know, a single mom. She couldn't, she could, she could only bring her kids with her if she wanted to go to work. So this was a blessing for her because she can now, mm -hmm. she's making a lot of money doing, doing cleanings. Yeah. And for us, we were just getting paid for just facilitating it. Wow. Um, and so it just kind of like leveled up where we ended up with just wanting to cover, have some of our mortgage covered to where we were getting paid for not really doing much except for just being in the right position. Wow. Listen, that is, I'm like mind blown. Like I did not even know that element you added about the cleaning opportunity. And yeah, there's yeah. so many things like we could go through this. So let me go one by one. First, I love the fact that you, you know, you said like, you know, it was a sacrifice sharing um, your home and stuff. But the truth is, Many of us do it during college and during undergrad. Yeah. So it's not like it's a new thing. Like, oh, yeah, I had to share my space. Like you had your own level. So if anything, that's better mm -hmm. than some people because they're sharing bathrooms, <laughs> they're sharing living rooms, kitchens. Yeah, you know? it's true. And so it's something that many of us do. Right. And we do it sometimes not because we want to, but because once again, we're trying to cut down on the cost. We're sharing our spaces. And you took that thing that many of us do and you use it to create an opportunity to do something that many of us have not done or have not been able to do. And the truth be told. The main difference, which we're going to get to later, uh, is mindset, right? Because if we really sat down and internalized, hey, who wants to live for free? Matter of fact, who wants to make money, right? Everybody going to be like me, 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 please, me, right? But not we don't often think of it that way, or many of us don't even realize that that is a thing that we can do. And so I love that. Like, you did that which many people did. And now you now positioning yourself to have extra income that you would not have had otherwise, and then do other things that you would not have been able to do otherwise. And then because you took that step, it opened up the door for a whole nother opportunity, which is the cleaning. And, you know, in my experience, I realized that as well. It's like, sometimes all we do is take one little step and then that one step leads to so many more opportunities, you know, but it started with that first step. And um, you also brought up the element of providing work for that, that um, young lady who was a cleaner. Man, Beta, when I tell you that's one of the things that I enjoy the most is like realizing like, man, this feeling of being an employer or like creating opportunities <laughs> for people like, it's different. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's one thing like, yeah, hey, I'm here. I'm providing for a patient, et cetera. But when you like start creating jobs for people, mm -hmm. that's like, it's, it's a whole different like experience. It's like, you also have to change your mindset to also to see that, wow, like I'm creating an opportunity, like, you know, but it's like, cause I know for me, I was be like, man, I should be, should I be doing this myself or whatever? But it's like, no, people are looking for work. And I'm going to provide work for this person. And now we both win. They're making the income. We're making an income. So now we're mutually benefiting from this business opportunity. And so I think that's amazing. That is so amazing. So tell me, you know, I think a question that many people may have who's listening to this is how did you even get a house? 
because that's something many of us grow up thinking is like a way later in life when you're established and have a legit job and have saved a lot of money that you can actually buy a house. So mm -hmm. how did you end up buying a house before even starting med school? Like, did you already have money from your parents or something? Like, how did that happen? No, we definitely, um, hard no, didn't have any money. Um, and I didn't really think we would be able to. It kind of felt like we were just like playing a game for a little bit. I almost felt like I was leading the, the realtor on because like, you know, we didn't have the, you know, a large down payment or anything like that. But what people don't realize is there are a lot of programs that offer down payment assistance that um, that are government or or city sponsored. Um, in almost every city I've looked at, there's usually some, especially for first time home buyers, there's usually some program that will offer you down payment assistance or a down payment loan that is forgiven. I know that here in Cincinnati, they have down payment loans up to twelve or thirteen thousand that are forgiven if you live in the house for five years. Mm -hmm. um, and so we found a program in Rochester called First Homes that um, helps to provide down payment assistance and gives like good loan terms for first time home buyers who make under a certain amount of money and is immensely didn't make any money. Um, and so we qualified for it. My wife was working. Uh, she didn't make a lot of money. She, she was working in, in child care. But we had enough with the down payment assistance and through this program called First Homes to just kind of like barely get into the market for house. Right now, if we have the same budget we had now, we have we had then now, we wouldn't because the you know the prices were got got so expensive. But at that moment we were able to just sneak in mm -hmm. and uh and buy a house using some of those resources that were available. So I tell people like if you look online and just mm -hmm. Google what are what resources are available, you'll be surprised that there are programs that will literally just give you money to buy a house. They'll give you a down payment um or at least a large portion of the down payment and then you can roll some of your closing costs in to your loan or have work out a deal with the seller. I mean, there's opportunities if you're able to save a little bit and find the right resources to get it. So that's kind of how we benefited. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, it was just, it was just the right moment because now prices went super high. And so if we didn't own, we were just renting all those years, we would have missed all of the value that our home appraised for just by owning it. In fact, mm -hmm. it, it went up by, even though we were renting it, just the amount that it went up by in terms of its value was more than what we were making in renting. Wow. So even if we had just bought it and just owned it for that time. Right. Um, so I tell people to like, think creatively. If you can buy a house, buy a house. You have to pay to live. Everyone pays to live unless you like, you live with your parents or you, you know, own a house. But if you're paying towards your mortgage, you know, you're at least, if, even if you're not renting, you're at least heading in the right direction. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how mm -hmm. we did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's, it's so true. You know, um, one thing I shared and that I've, I've embraced is some, a principle to keep in mind is something I heard from um, Greg Cardone. And he said, creativity mm -hmm. follows commitment, you know, and mm -hmm. I was like, Yo, that's yeah. deep, you know, because that's, getting, that's good. Yeah. Getting creative, mm -hmm. figuring out how to find the money that's going to naturally come when you make that commitment. And I think the the challenge that many of us have is that we're just not committed, you know, like we're still mm -hmm. like, I don't know, maybe this is not really realistic or it's okay. It's not that serious. I don't want it, which is completely okay. If you don't want it, you know, by all means, don't force it. But if you, when we really set our minds to mm -hmm. saying, you know what, this is what I want. This is, this is my vision. This is my passion. You know, I realize I'm going to be paying money anyway to live. And I realize I have an opportunity to be putting money towards a property or an asset that's going to eventually I can come that can come back to me mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. let, me, let me see if I can make it happen you know let me just commit to saying this is what has to happen and then now the opportunities you'll start to see it you know we'll get creative I mean how many of us got creative to get into to school right we said we wanted to be a doctor do what you gotta we do. That career so guess what we did what we had to do we went looking for the programs we went looking for the shadow and opportunities we did what we have to do because mm -hmm. We're committed to making it happen. And I feel like when we embrace that same mindset about saying, hey, I want that financial freedom. I don't mm -hmm. want to have to be a slave to debt and to finances. We're yes. going to be able to find our way. We're going to be able to find, be creative, find those resources and all that kind of stuff. And creative financing is such a common term now, you know, for investors, like mm -hmm. the people who have the money, <laughs> even though they're still using a creative financing. So who, why not us? Right. Yeah. So. That's 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 powerful. And I'm curious. I, like, I love that creativity follows commitment. I'm that is so stolen. Yeah. That is so stolen. I mean, I am <laughs> I, take I will be using that, Cloudy. That's a good one. 
<laughs> no, listen, that's Grant Cardone. I got to give him the credit, man. He he said it. He <laughs> said it. And I was like, yes, that's 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 very true. true. Yeah, no, it's true. So tell me where you are now. You know, apparently you've graduated. You've matched. You're in Cincinnati. Did you keep the home and continue renting it? Did you do uh, did you sell it? Did you cash out refinance? Like, what did you do? What did you decide to do now that you now that you have that home and you're now moving to another location? You know, so we kind of went through various thought processes about should we try to keep it and keep it going in Rochester? Um, and ultimately what we decided was the prices had gotten so high um, and it hit the, our home appreciated so much in the time that we owned it. And prices we knew in Cincinnati were still a little bit lower. So what we decided to do was to sell um, in Rochester when it was really high and just kind of cash out on all the, the money that it appreciated. And now that we're here in Cincinnati, we're looking to buy back in and restart. And we're hoping to get a duplex or a triplex. Nice. That's our that's our goal, um, to get a duplex or a triplex here to like increase the amount of units that we actually own. And so we're currently looking. Um, we're mm -hmm. watching the market to see, you know, to see when the, the right time is to, to take our stab. But our current plan is to kind of like reproduce our, our plan that we had there just on a little bit of a larger scale um, mm -hmm. here in Cincinnati. And then, um, yeah, that's our current plan. We're also thinking about doing some like arbitrage. We haven't mm -hmm. started that before. We've kind of known about it for a while. And now that we know we're going to be in one area for a little bit longer, mm -hmm. I think after we buy our, our duplex or triplex, that'll be our, our, our next step to try to get that going. Nice. Yeah. I, man, I love it. This is this is exactly what I hear when I listen to like other podcasts, like bigger pockets and all those, you know, you hear people who started their journey and you you just once you start, you just keep going, you keep scaling, you know, and and you take what you've learned and you duplicate it and you keep growing and it gets easier. Like after you've done it the first time and they usually say the hardest deal is your first deal. And then after that, it gets easier or your your the first project, the first every any the first is the hardest. And then it gets easier after that. And I think it's something that I really want listeners and anyone listening to to really keep in mind because I know it can feel overwhelming and daunting sometimes when we're like trying to get in, but it really does get easier. And once you start learning, you know, and committing once again to figuring it out and making it work, it will begin to unfold, you know, and, and make it make sense. And now you're you took one step and now it led to so many more like that domino effect. This one now triggers the rest, you know, and opens so many more doors and opportunities. And I love the fact that you're planning to continue with the whole house hacking thing, because, um, you know, I, I realized I didn't even define house hacking because I'm assuming everyone like listened to the the, the previous season. Um, but if anyone listening has not caught on by now. House hacking pretty much is when you buy a home, you buy a property with the intent of living in one space or one unit and renting out the others. And it's something that you can do with multi-units, as uh, Dr. Beta mentioned, he's about to do now during residency. But you also can do it with a single unit, which is what my husband and I um, have been doing since I graduated ever since, well, 2019, right before I graduated from dental school and before my husband started uh, OMFS residency. And it's also what Dr. Beta did, too. He had a single family and then just split it out in levels. And and this is why, you know, you know, I say that we are already doing it in essence during school because so many of us are finding an apartment, we're finding a house and we're looking for roommates. And so we already are going to put in that energy to find a place to stay. So why not think of, hmm, is it possible for me to buy a property instead? And then put in the energy to not just find roommates to help me pay rent, but to find um, roommates to help me pay my mortgage, you know, like that's, that's really the beauty of considering house hacking. Is it for everyone? Not at all. You know, not everyone's location or circumstances are um, favorable for it. But for some of us, if we just look into it a little bit more and if we make that commitment, we'll realize that it's it's an opportunity that we can really take advantage of. So with that said, Dr. Beta, I kind of want to transition and spend a little more time into like mindset, you know, because mm -hmm. You know, as we mentioned, this is something that really can make or break us in, in life, really in general, what I'm realizing. You can have all the resources, you can have all the steps laid out before you, but if you don't have the right mindset, you're not going to reach your potential. And you can also have nothing at all. You could be 
at zero, but with the right mindset, you can soar yeah. and rise and excel. And so, you know, typically many of us, you know, we're kind of on this one state of mind of like push through school, do well, finish, and then get out and work. And what we're talking about here, pursuing financial freedom is something that's not really common conversation really for many of us. And so I want to spend some time talking about the mindset that, you know, kind of is important for us to really start and continue on this journey. And, you know, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but I really would love if you could like share with us, like what made you make the decision that your career, because you're going to be making money as a doctor, right? Like someone could easily say, hey, I'm going to be a doctor. I, if I just push through and finish, I'm going to be making enough money and I'm going to be good, right? But you was like, no, I'm not about to just sit and wait or depend on my income from my career only. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be generating income streams from other sources. And from the way you're speaking, this is like a lifetime thing, like a no brainer. I'm going to keep creating income sources from other places so that, you know, we're not relying on our career for the income source only. And I would love for you to share like what helped you or what led to you making that decision? What do you feel like was important in, in that mindset? It's a great question. And um, so one, you know, we didn't grow up with a lot. And so I knew that like one day in the future, you know, after graduating and like residency and all that, you know, I have a, a pretty good salary. And I also understood that most commonly people just wait for that moment. You just like accumulate debt, do what you have to do to survive. And then when you get there, it's just like, but I also realized that a lot of people, when they get there, they're still in debt. They actually get in more debt mm -hmm. when they graduate um, and they have bad financial habits mm -hmm. and they aren't able to transit, uh, tra translate income into wealth. They're, they're not able to translate the money that they're making. They're working hard. They're burnt out. They're kind of a slave to their job. They can't quit. They can't leave if anything happens because like you have to pay off all of this debt and then you have to pay off this huge lifestyle that you've, you've started. And the only value you have is your ability to clock in and clock out. That's the only way that you have. Mm. And for me, I was like, I want to have freedom. There's a lot of things I'm interested in, like ministry and traveling, and I have hobbies. And for me, freedom is a, is a really big driving like principle. I want to have the freedom to make the decisions that follow my conscience. I want to have the, the freedom to make decisions that allow me to like go where I feel God is leading me. And I want to have the freedom to to prioritize my life appropriately, where I feel like these are the projects that I, I would value and would value me. Mm -hmm. And um, I also realized that there's a difference, like your education can get you a high salary, but only a mindset can get you wealth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who have big salaries, but they're not wealthy, they're poor. And if you actually follow like a lot of high earners, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't out earn a bad mindset, bad spending mm -hmm. habits bad mm. principles. You just can't do it. You can be making half a million a year, a million a year, and you can still burn through it and end up in the same position where somebody who's making 30000 a year, they feel strapped, they feel pressed, they feel like overwhelmed. And no matter how much money you make, you can still have that feeling if you don't have the right system. And so for me, my thought was in order to escape this and not to just keep going down you know, the hole, I wanted to be able to create one passive income. I didn't want to just be working more. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to be like, as soon as I get out, I'm going to work 300 hours a week. My family's never going to see me, but we're going to be rich. Like I want to be able to have other ways of earning income that don't require me to like be gone from the home. You know, I, I love, I love my job. I love what I do mm -hmm. and I want to do it because I enjoy it. Not because mm -hmm. I have to, I mm -hmm. want to be able to like, because like, this is something I enjoy doing mm -hmm. and I don't want to have to do it so much and so often and feel like obligated that it becomes a burden and then you get burnt out and then yeah. you're like you're, you're stuck in like a difficult life so yeah. i think it was just that realization that one your income can't really save you if you have bad so it's more than just about earning more it's also about being financially responsible yes. making decisions to like lower your income live simply live humbly like house hacking that's mm -hmm. a humble way to live we lived in our basement for four years yeah. And that's not a way to live that everyone would be down with. But for us, it was the right decision and lowered our expenses and, and brought us an income. So that mindset of like delayed gratification, understanding that like we're making the sacrifices now for something bigger and that there are more ways to generate wealth 
-hmm. more ways to generate freedom than just, I have to work, I have to do my nine to five. Mm -hmm. And if you're strategic in the way that you set things up, you can end up in a position where you're making money from just being awake, from just mm -hmm. being alive. You have other streams that are, are supporting you. So I think it was just that combination of things that, that inspired me. I was like, you know, there are some things you can do now. We don't have, we didn't have a million dollars to like go start a business or like buy um, stocks. We were just, we, we started small, but I was like, there has to be ways with where we are now to start doing something. And I had a list. This was what we ended up going with. I had a list of like, what are all the different ways that perhaps with our current position, we can do something just to one lower expenses a little bit or mm -hmm. to increase our income. Bit. And just from that mindset, like a, a good friend, Claudia, once said, um, creativity follows commitment. And once you make that commitment, <laughs> it started it just started a string of things that has been um, has been life changing for us. You know, just to be honest, it's been life changing for us. And this is just the beginning of our journey. You know, yes. we're in a new stage in life, and I can already see how these same pieces, like you said, the knowledge that we gained from the last phase, will hopefully mm -hmm. help us take farther ahead. Mm -hmm. Matt, listen, you, you literally took so many of the <laughs> words out of my mouth, like things that I have been like sharing, you know, on my post, on my lives, like just letting people know, like, look, like this, we are high income earners, but we are high income active earners, which means if we're not active, we're not earning. And we honestly cannot fall into the trap of thinking that because we quote unquote have secure jobs and healthcare that we have financial security, you know, mm -hmm. and my life is like a number one example of that. Like I was on this rich black dog tip, like since 2019, once we bought the house and I saw the, 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 the income coming in and I'm like, yo, we're not really paying for the mortgage. I was like, more of us <laughs> can be doing this. So I was mm -hmm. been on this tip, like, yo, you guys think about this, think about this. I need to figure out how to get more dogs to think about this. But let me tell you, last year, when endometriosis came along and started manifesting mm. itself, and I'm literally taking care of my patients, doing my procedures, and dying from pain, mm. I was like, yo, what is going on, Jesus? Like, Lord. And I was like, wow, is this really happening just two years mm. after I graduated? Like, uh, wow, wow. Of work. And it got to the point to where I was like, I, this is not sustainable. And I was like, mm -hmm. if I don't take the time out to figure out how to take care of myself, how to manage this pain, you know, a lot of things going to start being hard for me to achieve besides my patient's care. Like I got to think of the other side effects that come with this endometriosis and the other mm -hmm. things that I want in life. And so, you know, I had to make that decision, like stay and keep taking care of my patients and earning the income or step away to better mm -hmm. take care of myself and let go of the income. And I kid you not, if we did not start house hacking beta, I probably would have stayed in the job. Wow. <laughs> I would have been wow. like, look, um, I'm going to have to figure this health out thing on the side because mm -hmm. I don't know where this money's going to come from. And, you know, we all have our money personality ties, but I'm the kind of person I need to see money. Like, I'm not one to be like, <laughs> come it's gonna come like no i'm not with that i need to see that it's gonna come for real for real and so i really would i cannot be confident and say i would have chosen to do what was best for my health if i did not mm. already have those passive income streams coming and that's what really lit the fire up under me even more to say yo i really really even if it's just one student one resident one doctor that hears this message and decides to start taking the initiatives to start creating an income so that god forbid if they end up in my position where their health is failing them or it's the health of a loved one or maybe you just don't want to do the work anymore as much but you don't want to have to feel like money is a stress start pursuing that financial freedom yes start creating those income streams mm -hmm. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. COVID showed everybody that. Oh, yeah. You know? and, and I think that we really have to really sit and ask ourselves, would we be okay if we have to step away from our high income earning mm -hmm. careers? We have to ask ourselves. Yeah. Something happens, you know, um, the lifestyles that we want, you know, it, are we really going to tell ourselves we're going to keep trading our time to afford it? 
right? In mm -hmm. addition to the demanding careers we have. Like, let's not yeah. even talk about the burnout, you know, that many people are struggling <laughs> with. I feel like yeah. some of us, honestly, we finished school already burnt out. Like, to be honest, like, let's be real. <laughs> some of us have spent mm -hmm. most of our lives in school. We already tired by the time we get out. And now we got to start a whole job five days a week, you know? And it's like, yes, the mm -hmm. income is nice, but we really have to think about life. When we think about mm -hmm. the life we want, how we want to live, how we want to give, you know, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's difficult to do when you are in a position where you have to keep trading your time for money. It really, really is. And so um, I love everything you said and I love your mindset. I, I resonate with that 100%. I really do. And so my next question for you is when you, you know, looking back at your journey, you know, um, thinking about med school. So you're in med school, you're married, your house hacking, your personal financial freedom, right? For some people, that alone is a big turnoff. Like, how much time am I going to have to put into this whole, like, passive income creation thing? Mm -hmm. Some people, it's not hard because we all know there's many students and residents and doctors who's making money as influencers and they have other side hustles mm -hmm. they already mm -hmm. had. So that's something I also had to remind myself. Like, Claudia, you were probably the only one who thought it was impossible to do something on the side during school <laughs> because you just extra like that. You just think it's only school. But I know there's many people who know, you know, there's other things you could do in your free time and in your spare time to make money. Like many people do it. Like so many people, you know, partner with figs and they promote the scrubs and, you know, they have sponsorship. They have affiliate links. They have blogs. They have YouTubes. Like there's a lot of people who are still making money while they're in school. So this is not a foreign concept, but there are many of us, many people who like me feel like, what? How does that even make sense? I have to focus everything on school. School is stressful as it is. Where do I have time to be thinking about some investment or some house hack? So for you, what helped you to be able to juggle like being well, in school, like, yes. in a relationship and an investment at the same time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, to quickly touch on what you were, you were talking about earlier, um, you know, it's a it's an important concept that the future isn't guaranteed. You know, and a lot of us are taking a gamble that like in 10 years when we finish, one, there'll be jobs available, two, that we'll be in good health and in our right state of mind and we haven't had any tragedy. Like there's no, there's no real telling. And so, especially on the journey at the beginning side, it's like, if you begin setting up your, your freedom now, yeah. when you get to that point, if things aren't what you expected, you're going to be okay. Yeah. You're going to be okay. It's like, I've really kind of prepared my life for, I wasn't just, didn't have all my eggs in this one basket. Mm. But um, to your, your question, um, sorry, repeat it one more time. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm answering correctly. When it came to managing, um, juggling like med school yeah. relationship, you're married and house hacking, like, so pretty much pursuing financial mm -hmm. freedom, like creating that passive income, what made it doable for you to be able to manage it all? What helped you to real, to not say, okay, this is impossible. This is too much. How did you work it out? And so I think when we were looking at what are the different options we had for creating a bigger delta between our income and our expenses, I didn't want to commit myself to something that would be just another job. Mm. I was like, I didn't want to just have another job that is like active income where I have to like get up and go get it. I wanted to begin setting up things that would be low stress that would kind of hopefully after the initial work was put in, would be managing itself. Right. And so, you know, I thought about what if we started like a restaurant or things of that nature, like, but that's a lot of active work, you know, to manage that you have to really be, getting up and going after it um but i realized with rentals i'm like if you put in the work mm -hmm. and you set up a good system it takes a lot of work it does to set up the system mm -hmm. once the system is set up and if you put th a thoughtful plan into place it begins mm -hmm. to run itself right and so that was the goal i was like i know it's going to take us a little bit of work right now for the next several months to yeah. get this property to get it set up to get it listed in airbnb we have to do renovations to the house Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that, we, you know, we were just like, we're just gonna have to do it ourselves because, you know, just because of the budget. But I was like, once this is set up, if we get a good cleaner, we do the work and like set up our, our infrastructure and our, and our kind of ecosystem, all the different pieces we need, this right. really should run itself. 
and, and indeed it did. So it took us probably the first like six months was a lot of work. I remember I would come home, finding cleaners is like the hardest thing. So <laughs> before we found a reliable cleaner, sometimes I would have to be in, in med school and lecture for, for the morning. Then I'd have to like bike home really fast at like 11.45, clean the house and then head back for lecture at one because the cleaner didn't show up. Mm. And like, that was a lot of work. It's not really sustainable. But while we were building this, building on our pieces of what, what do we need to make this as stress-free as possible, it took work. But once we got it set up, we had a reliable cleaner. We had all of our messages automated. We had people on backup. We could leave for like weeks, months even, and it just kind of runs itself. You know, we might have to like every now and then make a quick phone call to this person to like fix this issue. But the actual time that we put in was very minimal after it got started, very mm -hmm. minimal. And so that's one reason I really love short-term rentals. I love Airbnb. I love renting as a way of increasing income because you put work in to get started. But then after that, if you set up a good system, it can really run itself. You yeah. know, you can even hire a manager if you want to like take care of all the, the messages and other stuff like that. Um, so for us, I was like, you know, that first six months, it was a lot of work. We'd come home, do painting, um, and then like we'd sleep, we'd wake up, we'd, you know, call a plumber, we'd do whatever we have to do. But once we got started, I mean, it really did run itself. Even with like the cleaning business, we would get the list of units that needed to be cleaned and then just like forward it on. And like, it was literally just like copy, paste, change of a few details and times, and then hit send. And um, so that's why I love this this type of, of income revenue. I know there's a lot of others, but mm -hmm. to me, this is one of the more passive kinds where it was like, once I got started, mm -hmm. I don't have to like every single day be working and working and working on it. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. I think, you know, the principle that you use that we could take away from this is a ma it's a matter of setting up the systems. And it kind of goes back to the whole creativity follows commitment. If you're determined to make it work, then you'll be able to create the systems that are necessary to make it happen and to sustain it. And mm -hmm. Um, I think that's really what it comes down to with any investment, really. Like, can you create a system to make it work? Now, of course, if there's mm -hmm. the system, you can't create the system or it doesn't work for you. It's demanding too much. Then time to pivot, maybe change it up or whatnot. But showing that systems is really what it comes down to to mm -hmm. make things work. It really makes it less daunting, if you will. And mm -hmm. it makes it shows that it's possible. And you know, some people might be like, well, that's too much. Like, why would I be trying to do that while I'm in school and whatnot? And, you know, to be honest, I would have been on that, that, that I would have been on that side as well. But when I think about some of the classmates that I had and some of the people that I know who had kids, who had long distance mm -hmm. relationships, who had other things just going on in life that they were juggling during school and that mm -hmm. they were making work while they were in school, I realized that yeah, choosing to figure out a way to create income that's going to serve you in the long run is possible as well. It just once again goes back to, do you believe it's worth it? And are you committed to making it work? You know, mm -hmm. creating those systems, creating those boundaries, getting the help when needed, delegating when needed, you know, the same way people do for other things that's going on in life during school. Because as we all know, life doesn't, it doesn't stop <laughs> while we're in school. And Many things will happen that's out of our control and that we don't want and we make it work. So it's it's possible for us to also make it work for personal and financial freedom that we want and that we know is going to benefit us later. So so, yeah, that that definitely makes um, a lot of sense, like having the systems and and knowing that it takes some work in the beginning, too, because that's one thing I don't want people to take away from this is to think like we're making it seem like it's really easy. There's no effort necessary mm -hmm. and it's passive, like any kind of running, any kind of rental, any kind of thing is, is not passive at all. By any means, there will be times where you have to step in and do things. But once again, it's all about is it worth it and creating mm -hmm. the systems and pretty much setting up those um those backup plans and things that will be able to step in and make it work for you in those times. Um, I want to ask anything, any important mindset shift that you feel like you had to make before you started this journey. And as you continue this journey. Yeah, that's a good question. I think one and then there's like a flip side to the coin. One, I think, is the mindset of delayed gratification. Mm. Understanding that this is like the investment phase of, of life. Um, this is the, 
the period of life where we're hopefully putting in the work, putting in paying our dues to build something later on that we can be proud of. Mm-hmm. Build something later on that our future selves would be like, would be pleased with like, oh, I'm so grateful that back then you made those decisions because now like, I don't have these worries. I don't have these challenges. So one is delayed gratification, understanding that on this journey, this isn't the final destination, we're going somewhere. And so it's like, you can live, we just convinced ourselves like, we're not gonna be in our basement forever. We can do this for four years and have the sacrifices and some of the annoyances. And like, sometimes you hear people jumping above you and whatnot, but we were like, this is temporary. You know, we're gonna be in this for a while. And as a result of it, when we come out of this phase, we're gonna be better for it. We'll have more education, We'll have a better knowledge of how to how to navigate this 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 uh, this industry, mm-hmm. and um, then the other one is not delaying your investments. Understanding that like you could just put it off, and you could people do it all the time, and most of them they end up just fine with like you know what I'm gonna all I'm gonna focus on right now is doing my research and you know getting great grades and doing all that and don't get me wrong that's super important you have to prioritize that because you know that that is a bread and butter you're going to make a, a lot of money in your career if you are on this healthcare path and it's important to prioritize that yeah. but you don't have to wait you don't have to wait yeah. the four years of of undergrad four years of med school three to eight years of residency there are yeah. things you can do now that if you have that mindset of like I don't have to wait. I could, there's something I can do now to get started. I would say that's another shift where you're not just looking down the road and like in the future, I'll have money. In the future, I'll have freedom. In the mm-hmm. future, I'll begin paying off these debts. In the future, since my first paycheck, you know, I'm going to just pay everything. Like, but understanding that like a lot of the principles and the mindsets you have now are just going to continue when you have more money. Mm-hmm. It's going to be that same mindset of like, I could invest now, but I have a $300,000 salary but I also could just like wait and do it a couple of years later. Mm-hmm. But understand like if you start something now, you'll begin developing a system that'll continue to grow and to grow and to grow. Mm-hmm. And um, to kind of alter that you're saying that you said earlier about creativity following commitment, I would also say creativity follows necessity. Mm-hmm. That there's a lot that we can do when we have to do it. Like if you, like mm-hmm. you said, if you have a child or you have an illness, you mm-hmm. find a way to make it. Or if you don't have any food in your fridge and you don't yeah. know how you're gonna pay your next, like you'll find a way to get it done. And if we have that mindset of necessity, like this is something that we have to do for our families. This is something that we have to do in -hmm. order to be able to set ourselves up for the future that we're dreaming of. Mm -hmm. I think that creativity aspect comes in and like, well, what are things I can do now? What do I have to offer? Um, And so I think those are the two things. One, delaying gratification, understand like, this is just investing for the future and also understanding that like, you don't have to wait for Mm -hmm. the future to begin investing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's very, that's very true. I, I love it. And, you know, one thing I, I shared in this um, past season is, you know, I talked about how when it comes to starting the journey, because, you know, I stress like start now, like you could start sooner. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I say start, you know, it's not like just jump and throw some money out there. It's start making that first, making that commitment, like mm-hmm. saying, okay, I want this, which will now lead you to start evaluating and identifying how can I make it happen? So it's a process, you know, to begin, you start preparing. So you start learning, you start equipping yourself with the information, identifying the different ways to do it and then solidifying, okay, which strategy most aligns with me now, you know, with where I am or where I'm going to be. So yes, maybe you're not going to start now, but because you already started, you, you've already committed, hey, I'm going to start pursuing financial freedom. You already got your game plan ready. So now when the opportunity does come, you're ready to go. Or when you get to that 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 point that you identified is a good point, now you'll be able to start it. But, you know, you, none of that happens unless we make that commitment to say, hey, I'm going to start sooner than later. I'm not going to mm-hmm. wait. And that's something that I... I want people to understand and, and to echo what you said, like the necessity part, like it's very true. Like we have no problem doing any and everything right now for our careers. Why? Because we're committed to the career and we believe in the end, everything we're going through is going to lead to this part of our future that we really want. And we have to have that same mindset for financial freedom. Like 
this aligns with what I really want in the future. So now let me also identify how to make that happen. You know, you want to be a doctor, you're going to make it happen to be a doctor. You want to get that car, you're going to do what you got to do to get that car. You want to get that boo, you're going to do what you got to do to get the boo. You know, like we, we, we're going to put in a time, we're going to put in the energy, we're going to put in the money. We're going to find the time. We're going to find the energy and find the money for whatever it is that we are set on. And mm -hmm. if there's anything I want people to take away from this is realizing that when you set your mind on, first of all, when you identify the, the freedom and the significance of that mm -hmm. time and money freedom, and then you realize how much it means to your life, the life that you want, whatever it is you're passionate about, then now you're not seeing blocks and barriers. You, you're now saying, uh -uh, I'm looking for opportunities and I'm identifying opportunities, you know? Mm -hmm. So... So yeah, that's I love your your two points: delayed gratification and and um, not delaying investing, you know, or taking taking action sooner than later. Um, I want to wrap us up. We're coming down to a close, and we're gonna do a short and rich cap session. Okay, so anything that anyone who's listening if you guys as you know we didn't really dive deep into like house hacking there's so many layers to house hacking, house hacking. Air yeah. tools. Uh, dr beta also has a cleaning business that's a whole nother topic in and of itself how do you start a business how do you do this like there's so many questions that we could dive into for the actual um aspect of the, the pursuing creating the the business and the income which we're not really going to focus on for this podcast but if you have questions i want to invite you to on the platform and this is this is exclusively for our members so our black doctors residents students who are part of the platform i this is specifically for you i want you to identify and get and gather all the resources you need so please do not hesitate to send in those questions on the platform here if you want to um we're going to share dr beta's information if you want to reach out to him and anything you guys send my way as well i can also relate to dr beta you never know we might need to do an encore right follow up like what are you doing now like how's your journey going now you're in residency you're about to do it again but on another level like this is my goal is to partner with individuals like Dr. Beto who are like, look, I'm here to share. I'm here to empower and to equip anyone who wants to do the same thing so that we can get to that same end goal. And if you have questions, I want to let you all know that please, 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 we are here to provide any help we can and any guidance and, and support. But the main thing that I want you guys to get from this episode is the importance of the mindset. And so I want to do this short and rich cap session by asking you three questions that I want you to, to answer. Keep it short and rich. All right. And so you ready? Yes. All right. So here we go. Number one, what is one thing you wish you did sooner? Um, let's say, let me say we did more of like a realization that there are 1 million ways to live life and you don't have to follow just the 10 paths that everyone else is taking. You can be creative. You can design your life to have the elements that you want. And, um, don't be afraid to like, think outside the box. I, I wish I would have realized that earlier and would have been kind of more emboldened to like try different things and like be creative, even if I didn't see other people doing it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Is there a book that helped you with your mindset or one book you would recommend? Because there are probably many, but <laughs> one you would recommend. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to break the rule. I have two. One, <laughs> White Coat Investor, I would recommend to everybody mm -hmm. to read. I think it kind of helped with my mindset shift mm -hmm. of thinking about now, not just down the, down the line. You know, if your journey starts now, if you wait too, too long, you miss out. Mm -hmm. And two, this is the book I recommend second only to the bible i mean i i live by this book it's a book called atomic habits mm. and i just like i can't recommend it enough but it just talks about making small decisions every day repeatedly that over time add up to big change and i mm. just if you can read it if there's one thing that i would recommend to read atomic habits it mm. starts that mindset of making small changes that end up with big results powerful powerful and what is one thing you look forward to using your time and money freedom for? Um, I would say one, traveling. I uh, love to travel. And two, uh, spending time with my family. You know, mm -hmm. I think one of the things that was really inspiring to me was seeing people who have money and use that time to just enrich their family's life, spend time 
with their spouse, their kids, cousins, siblings, um, and then also have time to like explore and see the world. And so that's something I look forward to being in a, in a place where it's like everything is set up and, you know, you can travel, be gone, go to go to kids games or whatever it is and not have to worry about like, you know, missing out on work because you know that your system is, is producing for you. Yes, yes. The systems, the systems producing for you. This was amazing, Dr. Veda. I We honestly could go on for hours and talk about so many more things, but you are a resident and a husband and an individual who needs time for you and all the other things that are important in your life. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for deciding to add us to your list of valuable things to commit your precious time to. I know this is going to be a blessing to so many listeners and um, I'm so excited for your journey. I'm so excited for everything you've accomplished so far and all the greater things that is to come. And I definitely look forward to touching bases with you again and even collaborating even more in the future. You know, uh, we, we, we did it in undergrad, you know, did a, did a lot together, our not nonprofit work and our passion and, and the service and everything. And, you know, one thing I look forward to is at the end of the day, seeing more of my colleagues have that freedom to like, let's just go back to doing that. You know, like, let's take the yes, time off. Yes, yes, yes. Do the nonprofit. Be like, we don't even mm -hmm. need the money. We're just here to serve. What you need? <laughs> we got you, you know? And so yeah. I'm so, so excited. And um, I thank you so much once again for, um, for taking this time to be with us here on this Rich Black Dog podcast, where it's all about empowering Black doctors, current and future, on their journeys to pursuing a financial freedom so that we can be able to serve on our own terms, enjoy fulfilling lives, and create powerful legacies that will not only change lives now, but change lives and legacies for generations to come. So thank yes. you. Blessings to you. And we'll be in touch. Thank you so much for having me, Claudia. Looking forward to talking again. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this episode. I hope that you all found this to be valuable for you and your journey. And I just want to take this time to invite you once again to check out richblackdoc.com. That is where you'll be able to access this podcast as well as the platform where we are with time going to be adding more goodies for those of us who are serious about identifying those strategies to make those moves and those investments that will allow us to make significant impacts in our lives and in our goals. So thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And as always, please do take good care. Bye.